All praise to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah Bashim Rikakadash. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Shah being the name of His only begotten Son, who they eagerly called Jesus Christ. Now we see in Bible prophecy um, starting to come to pass, and um, it's based on Revelation 13, where it talks about the beast was going to come with their uh, mandatory um, mandatory uh, I would say ultimatum to um, make it where people have to pretty much obey them to be able to pretty much participate in the economy so we see in the Bible prophecy come to pass and you got these naysayers that's talking about, um, you know, it's June and we ain't seen uh, nothing that's coming. So what y'all talking about, you know, like the prophecy ain't going to tarry. When, let's go to Habakkuk real quick. Now, when you look at Habakkuk chapter 2, it talks about this vision, and it was telling Habakkuk to write the vision, uh, write it down. And it said the vision, verse 3, it said the vision uh, is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Not always, oh, it's June, and it ain't happened yet. The vision ain't come yet. See, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Meaning it will not tarry forever. But it's going to be there and you're going to be tempted to say, oh, it's tarrying. Oh, it's not coming. Oh, you thought it was going to be that, but it's not that. And it's a whole nother vision. And your vision was wrong. See, that's why he got to let you know, though it tarry, meaning it's going to tarry just a little bit, but it's not going to tarry in uh, totality. It's not going to keep tarrying to where it's not going to happen. See, it's for an appointed time, and it's going to be a gradual buildup. And so we seeing the vision starting to come to pass. See, he's seeing uh, what Revelation is saying. And they coming with their so-called automatum. Now, they, this happened in Egypt, Babylon. You see, the, the, the Egyptians, uh, once they saw that the Israelites were leaving, they tried to bring them back and enslave them again. See? Same thing with with these red dragons because that's a part of the vision with Thessalonians. It talks about the time wouldn't come, the end wouldn't come unless these red dragons, these Edomites, was revealed. And Habakkuk is writing about the Edomites. Look at verse 3. God came from Teman. Teman is the wise Germans of the Edomites, the so-called white men. You see? So this book is about these dragons. And it's saying they're going to be doing whatever they're doing. And it's going to look like they're not going to bring what they're bringing. But the vision going to speak at the end. See, when they're being revealed, it's going to start speaking. It's revealed that the white man is the Edomite. It's revealed that the white man going to come with his, let's put you back in slavery again because they represent the Egyptians. The Egyptians tried to go and bring the Israelites back and put them back into hard bondage. When they saw, saw the Most High was taking them out of hard bondage, was taking them to the promised land. Once they realized we finna lose the Israelites and our kingdom, because they the one built the kingdom and gave us all this power. We finna lose all this. 
and they finna, the Lord finna take them into the, their own land. See? And this is what the, is spiritually, the Edomites is the um, Egyptian. And they want to bring the Israelites and put them into hard bondage, seeing that they finna be released out of their hard bondage. You see? That's why, let's go and get Jeremiah on this one. 30 and 7. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even a time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Because he they're going to try to put them back into bondage. Look at verse 8. This is what the Jacob trouble was all about. It says, For it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord, that I will break his yoke from off your neck and will burst your bonds, and strangers shall be no more serve themselves of him. So he taking the Israelites out of bondage, but these Egyptians are going to try to put them back in bondage. And this is what we see in, and they're giving a push for that situation. You see, and you know, they running the whole system, so we move uh, like serpents. Why is the serpent harmless as dove? Now, uh, let's get this. Second Corinthians, the second chapter, verse 11, it says, Let Satan shall get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. See, that device that they're going to try to uh, connect to the human body is going to be something that's going to enslave your behind back to them. Okay. But I just want to make that video real quick. All praise to you. How about you? How about you? How about you? Cock it down. Step on to the elders pushing the truth. Peace of the elect. The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Uh scattered around the globe and um our kingdom is at hand shalom